Good morning. Uh, welcome at UI webcast concerning uh, <coughs> a sta uh, standard audit file uh, for tax regulations <coughs> in Poland. Poland implemented uh, uh, obligation formal uh, regulations regarding obligation uh, ob uh, regarding uh, obligation to generate and report. Uh, within standard uh, aud audit file in 2015, those regulations they will become uh, binding for large taxpayers as of uh, July 2016. In the meantime, Ministry of Finance published the um, draft regulation on the on the structures uh, uh, that are going to be required from the taxpayers based on the regulations. Those the final structures after after some public discussion and consultations, the, the final structures uh, were uh, published in uh, March 2016. And uh, since then we know that the, the reporting that is going to be required by the Polish tax authorities are, uh, is going to be uh, uh, one of the most complex and uh, uh, wide reportings uh, in terms of uh, um, SAFT uh, uh, so far. <coughs> Many of our clients have already started the, uh, the preparations to report, to be able to generate the files um, um, upon request of the tax authorities. Uh, while assisting, we could see that uh, there is a number of uh, dilemmas or practical problems that uh, 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 come on the surface while, while discussing or working around the uh, impl implementation. Uh, so we decided to run that webcast uh, to share our experience and uh, basically to discuss uh, what are those t challenges? Uh, challenges? How can they be uh, identified uh, uh, beforehand, and uh, how to tackle them? What are the best uh, uh, best, best practices in terms of <coughs> tackling those challenges? Uh, in terms of ad agenda for uh, uh, for today, uh, we have basically uh, um, five modules, five five I would say quite consistent and dynamic modules uh, uh, that will be dis discussed. Uh, those modules are uh, the discussion or quick presentation on the formal regulations in Poland that are um, uh, applicable. Uh, th that will be followed by the discussion on what is being uh, basically offered by the software providers on the market and what are the uh, uh, dilemmas or, or the challenges in terms of the IT architecture that we are uh, we can see uh, uh, in practice. We have also uh, uh, the guests from the uh, from uh, European Tax Center, which is which is uh, uh, the team that is basically helping out and coordinate coordinating with the, the kind of. Uh, 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 projects that uh, that are happening across Europe, uh, uh, the the the, reg the similar similar regulation was already adopted two years ago, uh, uh, a couple of years ago in Portugal, in France. Uh, uh, our colleagues were assisting in uh, our clients in in preparation uh, and implementation of those obligations. So. Uh, they are also present and will be able to share the experience. Uh, we would also like to comment on the practical approach to the uh, SFT uh, uh, testing and verification. So how, how can this one be tested uh, before releasing, uh, releasing the content and the report to the tax authorities? and what may be the outcome of that testing. Um, uh, and we would like to uh, uh, sum up with the discussion about the practical, uh, possible practical changes uh, of the communication between the taxpayers and the tax authorities due to the implementation of the SAFT and the exchange of data based on the SAFT. So thank you very much for, for making the time for this webcast. And now I will hand over to Mateusz Pociask, partner, who will give you a bit of a break, background on the technical regula regulations regarding SAFT. Thank you, Radek, and <coughs> good morning, everyone. 
And so uh, I will start with, with um, basically, you know, the very quick introduction, what SAFTI really means and what it is. Um, you know, the basic thing is that this is basically the tool made and designed for the tax authorities uh, to support them during the tax audits. So this is not a tool um, to help taxpayers. This is the tool to support tax authorities. I will repeat myself here because this is a key uh, takeaway, I think. Uh, and that basically means for taxpayers that they are obliged to implement certain processes and procedures to be compliant. Uh, it will all start 1st July this year. Um, in the first run, uh, the regulations will hit uh, the biggest companies in Poland, the biggest taxpayers. Uh, this is made in a way that the medium and small one uh, will be uh, hit by the new regulations uh, no earlier than 2018. So uh, those have two more years to uh, adjust. Uh, for big companies that will definitely require uh, an implementation process uh, and considering you know the not only tax but also IT piece in all of that uh, of course the implementation is not a straightforward process we will touch upon that um, element during the webcast uh, today as well uh, the SAFT means that we basically start the full automated process of tax reporting in Poland um, in some other countries that has been already introduced some time ago, as my colleague said, uh, in Poland this age will, will uh, happen in, uh, in two, mo two months from uh, now. Uh, as for you know, the use of SAFTI by the tax authorities, it's all ahead of us. Uh, so in practical terms we'll understand how that is used uh, only in future. Uh, but considering you know the examples from other countries and experiences from other countries, it is obvious that it will be sooner or later the very basic uh, you know data source uh, for tax authorities to audit the companies. So in terms of quality of data that should be provided, uh, it's obvious that uh, we need to make sure that the data are complete and the best quality we can we can deliver. Uh, it is important to know that Poland is not, you know, alone uh, in thinking about um, SAFTE. Uh, we are fourth or fifth country in Europe uh, that decided to implement. Uh, we follow the OECD uh, guidance in that respect, version 2, uh, which is probably most close to the Portugal implementation. However, the scale of data uh, is definitely broader in Poland, so in that uh, respect, we are a pioneer uh, considering the entire the entire Europe. We also know, and and this is uh, you know uh, something that the Minister of Finance is already announcing, uh, that the files that are already uh, let's say in use, this is not the end. Uh, it will be developed, and we can expect more files to uh, come in future. So now I will hand over to my colleague to walk you through the exact requirements and uh, to including also the definition of the big enterprises because for those, uh, as I said, the requirement will come in two months from now. Thank you, Mateusz. Uh, let's try to answer a few basic questions regarding uh, SAFTI implementation in Poland. Um, let's start from the first question. So who is required to implement SAFTI reporting from the 1st July 2016? And this, uh, this obligation relates to the Polish uh, entities, of course, large entities, uh, uh, as well as uh, foreign entities that operate in Poland through the branch, and f uh, foreign entities which are registered for, uh, for tax purposes in Poland. And the second question is, who is a large entity? How should we define that? And um, uh, how do we define the large entities? Polish, tax provi Polish provisions do not contain the definition, the legal definition of large enterprise. That is why we use the definition uh, of uh, medium uh, uh, enterprise. That is why if the entity do not fulfill the criteria for the medium enterprise, it means that it becomes a large enterprise. And what are these criteria? The first one is um, um, employees. So if the entity hires more than 250 employees, it means that it becomes a large entity. The if not, 
we have uh, the second criteria, which should be uh, written uh, and together, and these are financial uh, criteria. First of all, first is uh, revenues. Mm, so the entities whose revenues exceeds 50 million euro uh, uh, and uh, whose assets are above uh, 43 million euro are considered as large enterprises. The second question is when the t may the tax authorities require a C C CFT? And it is uh, in Poland um, said that uh, the CFT will be asked on demand on tax authorities during the tax inspections, uh, tax proceedings and in, uh, initial inspect, uh, inspection proceedings. Right, so it would be on, on demand. That's important because we know that in some countries it is not on demand, but it is it becomes a regular reporting together with uh, filing uh, VAT on other returns. Uh, next question uh, is what is the uh, SAFT format? So the format is XML, extensible markup language. And uh, the, the, how would the uh, XML files, uh, CFT, will be um, introduced and uh, generated and uh, provided to the tax authorities? It would be uh, it, it was not defined uh, for sure yer, yet. Uh, according to the draft uh, of uh, legislation, it will be uh, through the website uh, or it will be on other uh, electronic data carriers. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, uh, the schemes, uh, safety schemes. Uh, we have uh, five basic categories dedicated for large enterprises, and these are accounting books, bank statements, inventory movements, VAT records for both sales and purchases, and invoices. And uh, in case of invoices, we have um, all, all the types, so purchase, sale invoices, uh, advance invoices, and correcting invoices. Uh, in other two categories, uh, schemes are simplified, are dedicated for simplified accounting, so smaller entities. Here we have an example structure for uh, accounting books, uh, bank statement, inventory movements and invoice. And as you see, some of the information uh, which are um, reported, which should be reported in, uh, in these structures, may be the same in, uh, in few structures, which leads, um, which leads to, the, um, to, to the fact that, uh, that, that these structures will be um, uh, so somehow verified and compare one to, to another. That was, uh, that was the basic information for safety structures.